Are you preparing for an Azure DevOps interview and feeling a bit overwhelmed? Well, you are in luck. In this video, we are going to share some valuable tips and tricks to help you ace your Azure DevOps interview with ease. Our expert trainer has analyzed several job descriptions to identify the key skills that employers are looking for and has also shared some sample interview questions to help you prepare for the big day. So, whether you're a seasoned DevOps professional or just starting out, join us as we explore the world of Azure DevOps interview preparation. Get ready to take your career to the next level. Now let's talk about the job description example. Like number one, an ideal DevOps engineer should have exposure of the following things. Cloud, Azure in this example, automation, if you can do Terraform, Ansible or Jenkins. Security best practices with monitoring tools, containerization with Dockers and Kubernetes or serverless architectures like Kubernetes or Service Fabric. This is unique, challenging and rewarding opportunity for Azure DevOps engineer to join a dynamic team with a company that has a great culture, a lot of autonomy and empowerment to do things the right way. I mean, that's kind of job example I'm saying, but the major pointers I should make when I prepare a CV could be, so my CV should include these factors. If I don't know that, at least to an extent of research on it, where I can answer a question. Like if someone asks me about Docker, what is Docker, how it works, and, and correlating myself with some real-time examples of Docker or some projects or some simple demos that I could have tried. So at that level, I could prepare myself. Maybe not 100% you could become expert, but at least to crack the interview, you could become expert in this process. Meanwhile, since they are specifying that they need two years experience, Azure DevOps environment knowledge, CI, CD, Pipeline, AKS, Bash and Python and Terraform, and mentioning that Linux experience is necessary. If you really think you have this Linux experience, then you can add some salt and pepper to your profile, which is matching these valid requirements here. And so that you can show up yourself in your profile, which would be neat and cleanly represented, including the certifications you did, and whatever the time periods you worked on different projects with technologies. And that's how your job description can be fulfilled, which makes your CV look neat, appealing at the same time qualitative. The representation, this looks good. The way the way they are they are defined, the pointers are defined. In that aspect, this looks good. Summarization of what they have did and all these, it looks good. In the right side, Maybe representation is somewhere tricky, but you have wonderful informations represented again, like your experience and etc. Maybe a mix and match of both, like good representation and proper information about your experience with the, with the actions you did so far could make a best option. So it's a dilemma. I'm not saying that this is great or this is great. It depends on the write up in it, it depends on your experience, it depends on the job requirement, it depends on certifications and all. So, in this scenario, the right side guy gets a lot of value because of certifications. The left side guy probably certifications are missing to an extent, but doesn't mean that he's not certified, probably he's certified. Maybe in the last he could have mentioned it. So, maybe changing it in the right standpoint could also grab some attention, like putting it in the beginning itself. Some general cloud questions you can expect in the DevOps interview could be like what is cloud computing so you, you can you can see like people could ask you what is cloud computing and that means you should have a right ideology like what exactly is cloud computing and how to address that scenario with some examples or different types of deployment models like i asked sas and pass what those are and why do they work out you should definitely check out those kind of thing if you don't understand it do a demo or see some example services for it so when you when you get a question like that you can remember an answer or what are different types of services offered in cloud like virtual machines, databases, storage, network, DevOps. So some examples, as I said, if you do few labs, you can remember them. So that's a point to be noted. What is Microsoft Azure and why it is used? So very simple question to address the demand, scalability, economy. So this way in Azure fundamentals, you have some addressing of information made so that you should have to remember. And when someone asks you a question with some interesting story about their office itself, you can say, like within your offers, you have servers and your servers are getting outdated. In that case, you have to buy new servers. So if I'm using cloud, it's not a concern. Like I could use a server today and if it's outdated, I can upgrade for an next version without any capital investment. So you can talk like that. Going forward, which service in Azure is used to manage resources in Azure? So in Azure, we have something called resource groups. So you can use that 
group all the resources into a folder kind of entity. So it's a kind of how do you manage the resources in Azure? They're asking. So they, their answer is going like that. So it just it just flies. So it's about thinking at the moment. Of course, if you think no, um, I mean I don't remember the answer, then that's fine. You can say like, uh, you know, in Azure I'll manage my resources doing tagging. I'll use my cloud adaptation frameworks and I do management. That's completely fine. You, you might you might you might not remember the answer at the moment. Some cases it happened. Still, you can crack it because you at least say the other curves and variants of it, maybe not mentioning the right answer some cases. So what are virtual machine scale sets in Azure? So group of VMs, which could be one or thousand VMs that can scale on demand, like more amount of traffic is coming and more CPU core and RAM is needed, more VMs will get added on the demand. When the traffic is gone, additional VM gets removed on that scenario. So this kind of automating the scenario where more VMs get added on demand and removed when there is no demand, you can do that by using the service, which is your Azure virtual machine scale sets. So it's, it's again, you can't answer them if you don't know them. So if you wanna know them, you can read them, but you'll still forget. But when you do demos, that's the very major thing I'll, I'll, I'll say to your people. When you try demos, you will remember them. One time you don't remember, two times, no, three times, which means three different demos on the same servers you do, you can remember so you can answer the question. What is an availability set? So it's a highly available architecture design, I could say. So you can you can consider like when you have your website hosted in a server, whether there is a short circuit or power failure or anything that happens within the data center as an end customer, you're never facing a downtime. So the downtime is not happening because there are certain features called availability sets and availability zones used in Microsoft. And those are helping you out to bring down an end user experience and ensure that he is experiencing a fully working application all the time. So that is done with the set of with a facility called availability set, which is grouping the VMs in a highly available architecture. So that means update domains and fault domains are the features in it. And a big story it comes for a high availability. You can you can follow up and you can say that story, which is by if possible, you can even draw a diagram explaining how it works. If you don't know that, it's a concept of placing VMs on an algorithm within the Azure data center, saying Azure not to may bring down my servers on at the same time, or saying Azure to ensure that they are not kept in the same rack so that the power supply or network failure doesn't bring my server down. So that's a part of facility and availability set. Then there is update domain. So update domains in the sense you have the logical numbering for your servers. So I could say that when Microsoft is doing a planned maintenance for the physical servers, do not maintain more than some selective servers which I have, because at a moment I don't want more so many services going down. So if you don't want that, then you need to do the thing I told, use the update domain, which is a part of availability set. So Microsoft will ensure not to update more number of VMs of your yours at the same time. It's, it's based on the demand basis they will do the job. So this way there are so many questions that again you can find out in the portal. But as I told, just reading or listening doesn't help out. So practical demo based experience to an extent could definitely help you to remember it forever. Some examples of DevOps technical questions. What is DevOps? We already discussed. So the concept of bringing your people and the process together to automate. So someone writes a code to a repo. The moment he or she writes the code, it gets automatically compiled, tested, built, then it's been deployed. It's a continuous approach. Why use DevOps? You know that. With the DevOps, I'm wonderfully doing all my quality relative issues. When you use DevOps, even though you're not in the system, you know what exactly happened. So I gave a task to my team, he did that. And when the error came, when the pull request happened, I knew that exactly where the error happened. Of course, for this, a little amount of knowledge on the application architecture is needed, but it's helping me out. I'm not sitting with a guy every time and talking to him, but I know when a problem occurred, I made a call, I just shared the insights and he's working on it now. So that is something you can do with DevOps. How does DevOps work? So you write the work items, you commit the work to a particular person, and so he will start developing the code and committing to a repo. Moment code comes to the repo, CI, continuous integration, the build will happen which is creating a package, then CD, which is deploying the build package to the stages like dev, testing, QA, staging, production, and whatever it could be. So the way DevOps works is a kind of process. It's not a service, it is a process. And that runs in your computers or it could run in the internet. 
or cloud services depending on the place where you make it happen now what is azure devops so azure devops is an offering of microsoft as a devops process in which you have work items for managing work tracking work you have repos for keeping the code you have pipelines for building and deploying the code you have the artifacts for keeping the packages you have test plans for tracking the test cases integration of your agents in on prem and wonderfully it's a user interface within the ui i can do anything i wish no need to have a hustle of having a challenge that makes your azure devops a unique one the benefits of devops just now i showed an example when my team made a mistake i actually didn't even see the code i just saw the error and came to know okay this was the issue you did now this way uh, complexity of this code would have increased if i didn't find this issue and moreover i never found it my pipeline found that so which means your day to day routines of tracking such issues is automated when it comes to your devops so name few devops tools so azure devops jenkins circle ci ansible chef or you talk about github actions what could you name it you have but the question is do those tools support all the features you are requiring if they support great if not what that's a question what are the popular devops tools for ci cd i think i gave the same answer now we have the jenkins atlasson you have github actions github do you really get the features you need then you go for one of these features or services which are in the market last one what are boards azure boards a place in which you can create your work items track your work items assign them make a capacity planning under that where you can create epics features backlog items and see the status of every action which is done which has to be done which is ongoing in an easy and wonderful way which is a drag and drop kind of representation so works being done works completed works ongoing everything as a tracking mechanism you can do and with the feature called azure boards all these can be done by us so guys this was our expert from team k21 academy and if you want to learn more about the concepts discussed in depth then we have something really special for you we have our free class on microsoft azure devops certification under this free class you'll be learning about why to learn devops on azure cloud what is devops who should learn about it some demo and a lot of hands on and a lot more interesting stuff so if you want to register for this free class all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash az4002 and after that you'll be seeing this kind of interface you just have to click on book your free seat now and select any event date according to your availability add your name your email number your phone number and click on book your free seat now and you'll be seeing this kind of url on the extreme right save that add it to your calendars and i'll see you in the free class till then keep learning